hope you enjoy watching this video. This is chapter four of Accounting 201, Accounting for Merchandising Operations. In this recorded lecture, I will review the highlighted learning objectives. You can read all of the learning objectives in the chapter four PowerPoint in Blackboard. First, we will look at merchandising activities and identifying income components for a merchandising company. So far, we've talked about a service company. Now we're gonna switch gears and look at merchandising companies. Service organizations basically sell their time so they have revenues and expenses to equal net income. A merchandiser also has a product. So we have a new expense, which is cost of goods sold. So this is the cost of the merchandise. So for a merchandiser, we will have our revenue less cost of goods sold, which equals gross profit, and then subtract the remaining expenses to get our net income. We will look at inventory now and cost flows. This is a very important graphic and you could also print this from the full PowerPoint. So our beginning inventory plus our purchases equals merchandise available for sale. Of the merchandise we have available, we've either sold it where it becomes cost of goods sold on the income statement as an expense, or we still have it left in ending inventory, which goes on the balance sheet as an asset. There are two inventory systems, perpetual and periodic, and we will look at the perpetual system where the records are updated after each purchase and sale. So now we'll look at Purchase transactions. When we purchase our merchandise, we will debit an account called merchandise inventory, and then we'll credit however we pay for it. So if we paid cash initially, we will credit cash. We can also have where we purchase merchandise on account, and if we pay early, we will get what's called a purchase discount. And it will look like this. This one is 210 net 30, meaning if we pay within 10 days, we'll get a 2% discount. Otherwise, the full amount will be due in 30 days. Here's an example of a purchase with a cash discount. On November 2nd, we purchased merchandise for $500 on account. So we debited merchandise inventory and credited the liability accounts payable. If we pay within 10 days, so that purchase was on November 2nd, now we're paying on November 12th, we get the discount. So we debit the liability for the full amount. We credit cash for a discounted amount. The discount is $500 times 100% minus 2%, so 500 times 98% percent. We will credit cash and the difference we will credit to merchandise inventory. So basically what we're doing with a discount is we're writing the merchandise down to the cost we actually paid which was $490. If we paid after the discount period we simply would debit counts payable and credit cash for $500 and we would not receive that discount. Purchases with returns and allowances means that if we return merchandise, we are physically returning it to the supplier. An allowance means we're keeping it, so we're not physically returning it to the supplier, but we will get a price reduction. In this example, Zmart, the buyer, 
issues a $30 debit memo for an allowance for defective merchandise. So in other words, the supplier is giving Z-Mart, where the purchaser, a $30 discount because of defective merchandise. So we want to reduce the amount we owe them, accounts payable, and also we are reducing the merchandise inventory account. With a return, it will still use the same account. We will still reduce merchandise inventory. So let's look at this example. They purchased $250 of merchandise on account. So on June 1st, debit the asset merchandise inventory, credit the liability accounts payable. Then on June the 3rd, they return $50. So this will be like the one we just looked at, debit accounts payable to reduce it for the $50 that we returned, credit merchandise inventory also to reduce it. And then when they make the payment on June 11th, we will debit accounts payable for the balance in that account. So we had 250 and we reduced it by 50. So we only owe 200. We will credit cash for 2% of the remaining balance. So 200 times 2% 2 is $4. So 200 minus four is 196, we credit cash, and then we reduce merchandise inventory for the $4. So merchandise inventory will always be shown at the amount Paid, less discounts, less returns, less allowances. Here are transportation costs. So Zmart purchased merchandise with terms of FOB shipping point. So that means that Zmart has to pay transportation cost. Here we're increasing merchandise inventory for the transportation cost. And we paid cash, so we are crediting our cash account. This shows the itemized cost of the merchandise. So this is the full amount, less discounts, less returns and allowances, and then adding our transportation cost. So now we want to look at sales transaction. This shows you how to compute gross profit would be our net sales. So net of discounts, returns and allowances, subtract our cost, and that gives you gross profit. We will have two journal entries whenever we sell merchandise using the perpetual inventory system. One journal entry will be to record the revenue, and the second journal entry will be to record our cost of that sale. So the revenue side is debit cash or accounts receivable, credit our revenue, which is called sales. On the cost side, this merchandise has a cost of 300. So debit the expense, cost of goods sold, and credit merchandise inventory. We are reducing merchandise inventory because we no longer have that inventory in our account. Now we're gonna look at a sale with a discount. They made a sale on November 12th, so debit it's on account, debit accounts receivable, credit sales, then the cost side, debit cost of goods sold and expense and credit our merchandise inventory. If they pay within the discount period, we will debit cash for the 1,000 less 2%, so 1,000 times 0.98, or 98%, so that's 980. Debit an account called sales discounts for the amount of the discount and credit accounts receivable for the full amount to clear out their accounts receivable balance. If the buyer pays after the discount period, we will simply debit cash and credit accounts receivable for the full amount. With sales returns and allowances, 
we're looking at returns of merchandise that we had previously sold or granting an allowance, which is a reduction of the selling price because the merchandise is defective in some way or not exactly what the customer ordered. So here are the journal entries. Customer returned some merchandise. It sold for 15 and it cost us nine. So first we will debit sales returns and allowances and credit cash because we are giving them cash. If the return goods are not defective, meaning we can resell them, we have this second journal entry to put it back in our merchandise inventory, increase merchandise inventory, and remove it from our cost of goods sold. But if the return goods are defective, we have to write the cost down to what we could sell it for. So we're saying here that it's really only worth $2 now. We can only sell it or resell it for $2. So we're going to put it back in merchandise inventory at the amount we can sell it for. We will debit a loss account. A loss account is similar to an expense account. So it will be a reduction of our net income. And that was for $7. And then reduce the cost of goods sold for the full $9. So if we grant an allowance to a customer for merchandise that is defective, but they're going to keep it, they're not going to return it to us, we will debit sales returns and allowances and credit cash. Now we will look at an additional type of adjustment that's needed for a merchandising company. So we need to look at something called shrinkage. So even though we're using a perpetual inventory system and supposedly we know the exact balance in our merchandise inventory account, we still have to take a physical inventory count and compare that to what our records show. So sometimes we have lost some merchandise due to theft, damage. For some reason, something happened and we need to record cost of goods sold for any shrinkage or reduction in our actual inventory count. So we will debit the expense, cost of goods sold, and credit merchandise inventory to bring it to the correct balance. So this is adjust for $250 shrinkage. For the closing entries, the new accounts included in Chapter 4 are listed here. So our revenue is now called sales. And then we have three additional accounts that will have normal debit balances, sales discount, sales returns and allowances, and cost of goods sold. So those will be included along with all of our other regular expenses. Add these all together and debit income summary for the total. And then remember, we get the balance in the income summary account, which is the difference between the credit and the debit. In this case, it's 12.9. We increase retained earnings for that amount. And again, that is also our net income figure. And then the last one is to close dividends. So reduce retained earnings and credit dividends. Now we're going to look at the difference between a multi-step and a single-step income statement. This is an example of a multiple-step income statement. So you can see all of the details here. We have sales, less sales discounts, less sales returns and allowances to get net sales. And then we subtract our cost of goods sold from our net sales to get our gross profit. And then we have our operating expenses separated into selling expenses and general and administrative expenses. Then we have a total expenses, which are the selling and general and administrative expenses combined. 
Income from operations will be our gross profit less our total operating expenses. And then we have some other revenue and gains and expenses and losses. So here we have interest revenue, gain on sale of a building, interest expense. And then we combine those to get total other revenues and gains or expenses and losses to get our net income of 14.9. So you can see all of the details in this multiple step income statement as opposed to our single step income statement where we still have the same exact net income, but we just don't have the details separated. So we have net sales, we don't see our gross sales, and then any other revenue, interest revenue is included here, the gain is included here, and expenses, we have cost of goods sold, our selling and general administrative and interest expense, but we don't have a gross profit subtotal. We don't have a lot of those subtotals that you can see the details of our net income as you can see in the multiple step income statement. This concludes the recorded lecture for chapter four.